Hey, yeah, Cryptizens. Tonight's show, SEC investigating Coinbase over securities. Bipartisan effort to make less than $50 crypto tax-free and stable coin bill delayed. It's 10 p.m. Pacific time. The date is July 26th, 2022. Welcome back to the Crypto Overnighter. My name is Nicodemus, and I'll be your host. The cover model, mascot, and co-host for this podcast is Tex. And together, we take a nightly look at the crypto, NFT, and metaverse space and the industry that surrounds it. So take a minute. Go ahead and subscribe to the podcast now because we're here at 10 p.m. every night so that when you leave in the morning, you're taking with you the crypto news analysis that you need to start your day. And keep in mind, nothing in this show should ever be considered financial advice. Coinbase shares were down bad today, 3.7% in pre-market trading. That's on top of 5.3% losses the day before. And this appears to be in response to the Securities Exchange Commission because they're investigating Coinbase. The focus of their investigation is on registered securities or unregistered securities. Specifically, whether or not Coinbase allowed U.S. citizens to trade unregistered securities. Now, Bloomberg reported on it yesterday. The SEC is investigating some of the tokens listed on Coinbase. SEC Chair Gensler has previously said that Coinbase should register as a national securities exchange. He has also said that he thinks most tokens are a security. Now, just this last week, last Thursday, I did a show on the feds charging that Coinbase employee with insider trading. He was front running coin listings on Coinbase and telling his brother and his friend to buy up those coins before they got listed. Now, the second part of that show was about the SEC. Because while the FBI and the U.S. Attorney's Office were charging this guy Ishan Wahi with insider trading-related crimes, the Securities Exchange Commission was doing their own thing. That's right, the SEC was running a parallel investigation at the same time the FBI and the U.S. Attorney's Office were investigating. And in the course of their investigation, the SEC chose to charge Ishan Wahi, Nikhil Wahi, and Samir Rahmani with securities-related charges. Now, the FBI, the attorney's office, they didn't charge the defendants with securities fraud, and they could have, well within their purview to do so, but they didn't. The SEC did. At the time, the SEC identified a number of coins that are listed on Coinbase that were identified by them as securities. Nine tokens were picked out specifically. Included in that list are AMP, XYO, and Chromatica. So they've said these tokens are securities and the brothers and their friends should be charged with securities-related violations. Guber Gruel is the director of the SEC's Enforcement Division. He said, quote, We are not concerned with labels, but rather the economic realities of an offering. In this case, those realities affirm that a number of the crypto assets at issue were securities. And as alleged, the defendants engaged in typical insider trading ahead of their listing on Coinbase. Rest assured, we'll continue to ensure a level playing field of investors, regardless of the label placed on the securities involved. Now, just from my point of view, legally, labels are very important because those are what define things, but whatever. This does seem to be a very, these aren't the droids you're looking for kind of response. Like, that's not what transitory means. That's not what recession means. It's an interesting way of going about this because it doesn't require an actual decision on each token beforehand. Just declare it an unregistered security in the charging documents and then make the defendants prove that it's not an unregistered security. Because this isn't a court case. No, when the SEC is doing its thing, it's an administrative hearing. So the same rules do not apply. When they go after the Wahi brothers and they get them in front of the administrative law judge, Coinbase won't be there. None of the DAOs or the companies or the foundations behind these tokens are on trial. They won't even be in the room. So the Wahi brothers will be convicted, and then that case will be used to go after others, like Coinbase. So it seems like yet another attempt to use administrative rulings in the area of regulation to expand authority. The SEC and Director Gruel were recently called on the carpet for extrajudicial regulatory activities basically imposing on companies not even in their jurisdiction. 
and they were called out for clear cases of trying to legislate through regulation. Empire building via regulation. Using that lack of clarity. Some might say an intentional lack of clarity as a way of claiming more control. Because the fuzzier the rules are, the more open to interpretation they are. And that goes right with what the CFTC Commissioner Caroline Pham said on the subject. Quote, This case, SEC versus Wahi, is a striking example of regulation by enforcement. And then goes on to say that the SEC's process is not within the spirit or the letter of Administrative Procedure Act. She said, quote, Regulatory clarity come from being out in the open. Now, for their part, Coinbase sounds confident. Paul Gruel said that they are looking forward to dealing with this. He said, quote, We are confident that our rigorous diligence process, a process the SEC has already reviewed, keeps securities off our platform. Now, for his sake, for the customer's sake, and for the entire crypto industry, I hope they're right. Because if Coinbase falls, that's going to have long-lasting and far-reaching effects. At the time of writing, the global crypto market cap is $967 billion. It's down 2.6% in 24 hours. The top five cryptos by market cap are Bitcoin down 2%, Ethereum down 2.66%, Tether, USDC, and Binance Coin down 0.63%. A pair of U.S. senators, one Democrat, one Republican, are working to make spending crypto easier. That's right. Senator Pat Toomey and Senator Kristen Sinema. They're working to make both tax reporting and spending cryptocurrency easier for the average person. Basically, getting rid of taxes on crypto expenditures of 50 bucks or less. Because right now, the IRS is the enemy. At least as far as spending crypto on everyday purchases goes. Why? Because cryptocurrency isn't seen as currency. It's seen as an asset or property or security, if you ask Chair Gensler, which that was a previous segment. The point is the IRS says, quote, when you sell virtual currency, you must recognize any capital gain or loss on the sale. And because it's property and not currency, you, you can't just spend it. Technically, what you do is convert it to fiat, which is then a taxable event, and then spend that fiat, which might also be a taxable event. So here's the deal. The Virtual Currency Tax Fairness Act is there to fix the problem. Senator Toomey and Senator Sinema are putting this forward as a way to get rid of the tax requirements on small crypto expenditures. That kind of lines up with legislation put forth last February in the House. Basically, the only difference is the amount of money concerned, 50 bucks versus 200 Also, the idea of cleaning up the tax reporting process around small expenditures showed up in another bipartisan effort. Senators Lummis and Gillibrand put forward a much more comprehensive crypto regulatory package, the Responsible Financial Innovation Act. That is a much broader, more expansive legislative effort that really isn't likely to see the light of day. Certainly not anytime soon. So there's been a number of legislators and representatives that have heard the complaint. Taxing crypto, like property, guarantees it won't be usable as currency. I mean, who wants to record a tax event because they stopped by Starbucks for a mocha on the way home? Senator Toomey said, quote, While digital currencies have the potential to become an ordinary part of Americans' everyday lives, our current tax code stands in the way. Toomey is due to retire soon. He's working with the crypto industry on a number of different fronts before he retires at the end of this session. And he is on his way on that score. The bill will let people, quote, Use cryptocurrencies more easily as an everyday method of payment by exempting from taxes small personal transactions like buying a cup of coffee. Which is an increasingly valid point. Who wants to pay up to 20% capital gains to cover the cost of a cup of joe? I think it's instructive that so many different legislative concepts have emerged this legislative cycle centered around this very thing. And frankly, the fact that every single one of these proposals is a bipartisan effort, that's everything to me. The U.S. political scene is best described in terms usually reserved for describing battlefields or triage wards. It's not a pretty place. So the fact that not one, not two, but 
three bipartisan teams are working together to fix this issue is both surprising and a little heartwarming. A little. We'll see if anything actually gets accomplished. Frankly, I don't expect anything to happen this year. It's too close to the midterms to let anything weird through the legislative process. Besides, the teams are too busy showing how different they are from each other than to cooperate. That said, I hope this bipartisan trend continues. I firmly feel that if crypto becomes a left versus right issue, then both sides are going to lose. The global NFT market cap is down 18.57%. Sales volume is down 0.86% in 24 hours. According to CoinMarketCap, the top five NFT collections by sales volume are Mutant Apes, followed by Other Side, Bored Apes, CryptoPunks, and Moonbirds. Now keep in mind, some of these collections have very volatile prices, so do your own research. Now, we were just talking about how inter-party cooperation is a needed and scarce thing. Here's another example. The House Financial Services Committee was forced to push back its long-awaited stablecoin bill. This is likely to push it back to September due to objections raised by Treasury Secretary Janet Yellen. The earliest anything could happen at this point would be September 5th, because that's when they come back from their August recess. This was another bipartisan legislative effort, this time between committee chair Maxine Waters and Representative Patrick McHenry from North Carolina. There's been so many legislative concepts introduced recently, it's easy to get lost. Now, this one is about the stablecoins. It would let banks issue stablecoins. It would also let non-banks issue stablecoins under the oversight of the Treasury Department. Now, it was originally scheduled for markup on Wednesday. Well, that's not happening because everything ended up devolving into a fight. The independent community bankers of America, they weren't happy. Of course not. This is a bill that would make them less special. So they sent Representative Waters a letter. They want the markup scheduled for tomorrow to get delayed. And then also, Secretary Yellen has some concerns. And if you listen to them, I guess you can hear her point. We are talking about stablecoins here, and they do have a different dynamic. Treasury wants digital wallet providers to keep customer assets separate. This is to preserve the capital of investors in case something goes awry, like a bankruptcy. Seems to be happening a lot these days. Now, they were close to an agreement. That was before Yellen got involved. Then they pushed the concerns that Yellen raised and effectively it devolved into a fight. You know, They were pushing to release the text of the bill this week, but that's not going to happen. They certainly aren't going to have an agreeable markup ready for tomorrow. Unfortunately, this bucks the bipartisan ground that senators and representatives have been working for, at least as far as crypto goes. That said, I'm glad to see they understand the need to get this legislation right and that it can't become a political football to be thrown around. We can't let it become a weapon that one party can use to punish the other with. This is too important for that. And that's going to do it for us tonight. I want to thank you, my listeners, because when you stop listening, I will stop talking. You stay safe out there. Watch out for yourselves, but watch out for each other, too. We'll see you tomorrow night.